What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here. We're gonna take a little break from our overclocking competition with our friends over at Gamers Nexus. And uh, Paul got in there too. He's in the top 10 now. I believe he's number 10. Uh, he's got a lot of distance to make up, but he's in the top 10 nonetheless. We're taking a break because I promised you guys when RTX launched that I was going to compare it to Ryzen. And a lot of you guys have been like, where is the Ryzen video? And we wanna see if Ryzen is holding back this level of graphics. Arguably the 2080 Ti is the fastest single gaming card, single GPU gaming card that you can buy right now. Titan V excluded, um, not really a gaming card. So we wanna see if this level of performance is being held back by our 2700X 16 gigabytes of RAM rig, which is very much more representative of what you would see in the average gamer. Uh, you, you're more likely to see a system like this than say our 7980XE. So is it bottlenecking? Let's find out. Do you want to be cooler? Do you want to be more desirable? Well, you're in luck because right now you can own your very own Jay's Two Cent swag and immediately be the cool kid on the block. Max out your sex appeal by following the link down below. So we're gonna do this very similar to how I did the initial launch, because that was an 8700K system with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I am going to be benchmarking the same titles that we did at launch with the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. Now this is the EVGA DG80, uh, DG77K, so I almost said 87. That's a whole different TV looking one. Uh, I also took the front panel off so that it has open airflow. This is not the most high flow design. And then I'll be leaving the side panel off too because this is just a box to hold our parts. This is not reminiscent of what a thermal's like. So as I mentioned, this is a 2700X system. It is running out of the box settings, just like I did on my 8700K. Um, I will allow it to do a, why isn't this going in there? Does anybody know how to install a GPU? So uh, it's out of the box settings for the CPU, no overclocking there. I will be, however, enabling the faster memory because we know that Ryzen likes faster memory, and we are not gonna choke it there. So we are going to, at the end of the day, run all the benchmarks. We are going to compare the results, and then that should theoretically give us a pretty good example of whether or not this is slower than 8700K. We have had two more driver revisions from NVIDIA ever since we got our test samples, which was on a 411.54 driver. We've had 411.63, and now 411.70 is out. However, the release notes on these, none of them mention anything about improved performance out of Ryzen. They are simply game ready drivers with game profiles for the newest games like Assassin's Creed and all that stuff. So with that said, let's fire it up. Where's the button? Pretty. Yeah, I went RGB puke on this one. Okay, so we just spent the last couple hours benchmarking our Founders Edition 2080 and 2080 Ti with our AMD 2700X and 16 gigabytes of, uh, was it G-Skill Flare X, which is Ryzen optimized memory. 
Now let's talk about a couple things real quick. To make sure it's fair, the 8700K on the ASUS Maximus board that we used on our test bench when these first launched was set to like core performance mode where it will basically apply the turbo clock to all the cores. We enabled that same setting on this ASUS motherboard, which is the new Crosshair 7, I think it is, or Crosshair 6, whatever the latest one was. And it's doing the same thing for AMD. So it is turboing all the cores as high as they'll go, which is giving it uh, the same scenario, leverage, advantage, whatever. If we had done that on Intel and not AMD, obviously that would have been a stack test. And we don't want that because my phone made noise. Obviously Ryzen processors are very, very popular, especially with the second iteration with the 2700X, 2600, 2600X and all that. Ever since Ryzen launched, it has kind of caused a splash in the CPU market, AMD gaining back a ton of, uh, well, market share amongst gamers and productivity specialists because of its much improved IPC versus FX and the fact that it has just turned into a multi-threading beast with eight core 16 thread available in the $300 range with the 1800X. So it's very valid to talk about this for gamers and streamers and all of that. Now the results were pretty much as I expected. As we move towards the higher frame or the higher uh, graphics like 1440p, 4K, we see all of the, well, the processing being offloaded onto the GPU and these scores are very, very comparable. What you'll notice if you look at the charts very carefully is the synthetic benchmarks like the synthetic benchmarks like Fire Strike, Time Spy, Superposition, uh, Metro Last Light, not so much. But because they are synthetics, they are designed to do only one thing, and that is stress your GPU. Uh, they are very, very close. A couple of percentage points here and there, kind of given to Intel or AMD, back and forth, where it's margin of error. There's a lot of different things that could account for that. You would never notice that in day to day. And most people could stop at that and say, see, they are perfectly matched. But that's not a real world test, and that's why we test synthetics as well as gaming titles. So we've looked at Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we also looked at Far Cry 5. I tried to get my uh, Wildlands to load, but it was having problems, and so we didn't spend the time to download another 60 gigabytes worth of game. But the story is pretty interesting because Rise of the Tomb Raider is an AMD title. It's got the AMD splash screen. It was built in conjunction with AMD development and so the AMD money and all that. But we saw that on Ryzen 2700X, we got better scores with the same GPUs than we did on the Intel 8700K. In that title specifically, it really pulled ahead. But when we looked at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is the most modern title for Tomb Raider, we saw it kind of go the other way, that there was definitely a reduction in performance when we had the same graphics cards plugged into our 2700X versus our 8700K. Now that could be for a lot of different reasons. It could be a little bit more CPU overhead, but as games evolve and move more forward, uh, forward facing and future proofing, I guess, we've seen a lot of studios and developers really move towards multi-threading, which has kind of alleviated the bottleneck in a way because that's a shared workload across all of the cores, something that until the last few years hadn't really been leveraged as much as possible. But when we look at Far Cry 5, which is a notoriously heavy CPU title, especially when you're playing the game, uh, we were surprised to see an anomaly here where I was getting the exact same score, well, one FPS difference back and forth between 1440p and 1080, which would tell me immediately that there was some sort of a CPU bottleneck. But given the fact that this was a built-in benchmark and not the actual gameplay itself, I investigated a little bit further and we turned on the overlay on MSI Afterburner and we saw that one core was always pegged at 100%. Uh, percent. Sometimes it was stuck on core nine or core seven, and the, it's supposed to be moved around to share the workload so that it doesn't, for cooling reasons, it wants to not heat just one core in the die. And so it was surprising to see that there was always at least one core maxed out, even in the menu. And you could see that the GPU was sitting only in the 50 or 60% usage, and the core speeds stay high, and the temp stayed low because the GPU was not being leveraged. But when we looked at the CPU, it was not being pegged entirely. There were lots of cores sitting there in the single digit utilization doing nothing. So this is obviously an anomaly with the Far Cry title. At the end of the day, here would be my recommendation. If you are in Ryzen and you are considering getting a 2080 or 2080 Ti, as you step it up to the 2080 Ti, that is obviously the behemoth of a graphics card. These were not overclocked. These were out of the box settings for both Intel and AMD. And since we are seeing a little bit of hold, hold back, I don't wanna say bottleneck, because it wasn't really bottlenecking, there was definitely a CPU intervention with how far the GPU could go. If we were to overclock it, that would have only exacerbated our results and made them, that's always a fun word to say, exacerbate. I feel like I'm being dirty, but I'm not. Like I'm getting around the parental filter. I think I'm on a tangent. 
right now. I should probably get back on topic. But I digress. But I digress. What, have I not been saying it enough lately? No, it's just I didn't, no. want, to, I didn't want to lose that bet against that one commenter that said, dude, I'm gonna find a video where Jade doesn't say it. <laughs> and I was like, but depending on the titles that you play, like the new Battlefield 5, Battlefield 4, titles that are very much more GPU friendly, um, MMOs, games like World of Warcraft, they're always gonna be CPU bound because there's just so much of a world they have to render. All those player models have to be rendered. All the data of this player's doing this. You, know, you got 300 people sitting in one area. The CPU has to make sense of all of that where the graphics card just sort of handles the pretty post-processing. The CPU handles most everything else. But the 2080 Ti could potentially be held back by the 2700X if you don't overclock your 2700. This is, like I said, this is all out of the box settings with the exception of the one core enhancement check that I did on the BIOS. But the 2080 itself though, um, definitely seems like it had no problems with the 2700X and could definitely hold its own without feeling like it was being held back. It's only when you go to the extremely expensive and over the top and overkill 2800 Ti that you really start to feel some sort of um, restriction in your gaming experience. But this is a topic that we will investigate uh, more complete. We, I wanna do more titles when Battlefield 5 is out. I wanted to add that. I wanna add um, like Final Fantasy, but not till DLSS is out because once that's a thing, that might help the CPUs because then the GPU doesn't have to handle all of the post-processing and the anti-aliasing. But again, features that don't exist on our very expensive, very shiny paperweights. Be honest. I mean, they still play games very well, but there's features in there that are not unlocked. It's like Tesla's autonomous driving. It's there. It's baked in. You just can't access it because it's not allowed yet. And that's kind of where we are with these cards. But go ahead and game freely on either platform that you like, because really, unless you're on something as old as like an FX or a Celeron or something like that, you're going to be just fine with the latest and greatest. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.